Hell Divers 2. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words of the words of the developer. The galaxy's last line of offense. Enlist in the Hell Divers and join the fight for freedom across a hostile galaxy in a fast, frantic, and ferocious third person shooter. Yes, guys, Hell Divers has evolved. Um, well, or has it? I don't know. Uh, it depends on your take on third person or top down. Uh, Hell Divers 1, which was top down, which you'll, you'll catch the review on this channel. It was about eight years ago, but it's still up there. Um, I, I enjoyed it. It was a good game, a really good game. Hell Divers 2 is different. Uh, it's third person, which changes pretty much everything, so you can't really compare them at all. It's a completely different genre of game, even though it, it carries on the same kind of thing. Uh, what you got, if you've never played Hell Divers 1, and I'll talk as if you haven't, uh, it's Starship Troopers, essentially. Um, it's quite similar to the Starship Troopers uh, extermination game that um, I still play now, which is really good, which has just had a, a big patch fixing all the stuttering, just saying. This um, hasn't had a patch fixing all the stuttering yet. There's, there's issues with this game. It's it's another it's early access. It feels like an early access game. Um, there's things just not working at all on the game. V-Sync, for example, just doesn't work on the game. Um, I had to go into the NVIDIA control panel to set VSync on, and that kind of fixed my stuttering issues. It has massive disconnect problems, uh, which are now fixed on the PC, kind of. But if you're still playing cross-player, then it seems to be a console issue. Um, they're having the, the, the disconnects if they try to connect to a, a PC player. So there's, there's issues like that. There's bugs in the game, and I don't mean the bugs you shoot. There's other bugs, people getting stuck in places. Uh, drop pods dropping in the wrong place and things like that um, but overall the game is fun but the big problem that this game has is the what I would call unethical microtransactions that come with it and I'm going to start and get that out the way straight away this game is pay to win there is no denying that because it just appeared the, the, the term pay to win is a bad reference it's just kind of stuck but pay to win doesn't literally mean you pay money and you win. Obviously, you'd have to be an arse to think that that's what it means. There what pay go. to win means is you pay money to get an advantage over your fellow players, whether that's in co-op or PvP, it's relevant. I mean, it's worse, I guess, in PvP, but in co-op, it's still not much fun when you've played the same amount of hours as somebody on your team. They're running around with all this great gear. You're with the shit gear because they've paid an extra £15 for that gear. And that's how it works in this game because there's two kinds of current where well, there's a few different types of currencies in this game uh, but the two main ones are the um super credits and the badges that you get for for actually medals rather that you get for when you complete a mission or find stuff now you can uh, unlock everything by grind there's nothing hidden behind a peer wall in this but the grind will be a long grind <laughs> if you don't get your wallet out and pay the extra 15 pound for the i guess it's kind of like a battle pass that allows you to unlock new, uh, uh, a kind of pass system into new gear that's just better than the gear if you don't have that and you can access it pretty much from the off. Just after doing a few missions, you will be accessing better weapons, better armor, etc. I should know this because the three people that I've been playing with for seven hours all have that battle pass um, unlocked and they because they have the deluxe edition and so they all have better gear than me even though we kind of roughly round about the same level they are a couple of levels higher than me but i still if i was their level i still couldn't access that gear so they are paying to have an advantage they have a clear advantage over me as i'm playing because they have better gear it's as simple as that there is no denying it that's just the way it is so let's get that out of the way um so there isn't an argument there i've got i'm actually proof of that with the time played and who i've been playing with so what's the game like then well you Start off on your spaceship, you create your character, and then you get a uh, mission on these. this kind of like battle table where you can see where the arachnid forces, sorry, Terranid, I say arachnid, it's starship troopers. And you pretty much work with the entire community to push them back. So it's like a living map, if you like, where other people's games make a difference, which is really cool. I like that kind of shit in games. And you decide where you're going to deploy. There's not many options, to be fair. And the missions are quite samey, very, very, very samey, to be honest. Um, so they need to open that up a lot more or people are going to get bored. Um, yeah. But anyway, you choose your mission, choose your loadout, 
and then off you go. You drop down four views. It's four player co op. Single player you can play, but you can't really. Uh, single player is just nah. Um, minimum, I would say, is three players to have a decent chance on some higher difficulty levels. <clears throat> so, yeah, we're in four players and you drop down and you have objectives to do. There's a map to explore. You decide where you drop down, which is another cool thing that I like. Uh, so you can choose to be near the objective or far away from the objective if you want to explore the map find hidden things that's um, there to explore find, you'll find super credits if you do that and medals and things um, so it's worth exploring the actual maps and on the maps of course there is the Tyranids now there's also maps that don't have Tyranids on but have different enemies on these people have <laughs> uh, ripped off all the good movie IPs there's Terminators there's Atats from Star Wars and there's the Arachnids from Starship Troopers and I like that because I like all of them things so to see them on the battlefield is great so I don't give a f so you have different types of enemies that you'll face and you need good gear against certain types if you bang, bang the difficulty level up you will get heavily armored stuff my gun was pretty much useless but the other guys who'd paid to win they had weapons that could penetrate the uh, armor of these big things and bring them down which was nice um even though i could just watch because i didn't pay to win yeah i won't say pay to win anymore guys now one cool thing that you get in this is you get um stuff is stuff in your net drops now i'm forgetting what you call them but you um unlock these as you go through the game as you get uh, credits for com completing missions you will get access to a quite a large tree of goodies that you can call down from your mothership to help you in the battle these are airstrikes these are supply pods for your ammunition these are um special weapons all kinds of stuff you can call down but for some mad reason you have to do a little mini game that looks like combos from tekken to, to actually get them to come i don't want to see the i mean i guess the point of that is to try and put you under a bit of pressure but it's absurd it's absurd because it's like your stuff from your ship. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Picture this. Right, guys, I'm going on a mission. Now, all this cool gear that's here, I'll tell you if I need it down here, okay? And you send it down as soon as I need it. Yeah, that's fine. Now, what I'm going to do to make sure I probably die trying to get some of it, I'm going to have a ridiculous combination of key presses that I have to do in order to tell you what to send me. I mean, it's fucking absurd. They need to ditch that shite and just say, look, if you want that, press that key, that, press that key. That, it would just, it, it, it makes more sense. It's, it's, you are literally gimping yourself <laughs> in the game by having, that's just, I find it hilarious. But these things are phenomenal. These are airstrikes, huge explosions, hell bombs, all kinds of stuff. And I think this is why we were talking about this in the game this afternoon. I think this is why it's only four player co-op because if you had any more players in with this kind of shit available, you would probably destroy the fucking planet. It, you'd all die. Friendly fire is just, it's there all the time. And um, we've had a few friendly fire incidents, I can tell you that. But it's really good fun running around the planet, dropping down all kinds of airstrikes. The guns sound awesome. The really, it is a bit clunky. I have to say the game is a little bit clunky. You can't jump. You have no knees because it's a console It's a console game uh, ported to PC. One of the first signs that you're playing a console port is whenever you're playing a game where you can't jump, you can guarantee it's made for consoles for some reason. Uh, controller players don't like to jump. But it is a fun game. We've had a blast. I've done seven hours in it so far, and I'll be doing a few more in it to unlock a few more of the uh, non-pay-to-win weapons. Missions are a bit samey. The enemies can get a bit samey as well. Uh, you're fighting the same stuff over and over. Although, the, the, like I said, there is the um, other option, the mechanized option of, of planets that you can go to and fight because you're fighting on two different front fronts. The Terranids on one front and the other uh, faction are like Terminators with Atats and stuff like that. Um, they are pretty tough because they fire bullets back at you. So it's, it's quite a um, hard game if you're playing it on a harder difficulty level and you have to extract at the end and you've got to kind of hold the LZ for, a, for a, I think it's two minutes while the dropship comes in, which is really good. It's not as exciting as the end of the Starship Troopers games, but it is it is still quite exhilarating uh, when you desperately hold an LZ and then the, the ship comes and takes you away. 
Um, the game's full of boundaries. Sorry, you're moving out of the mission area, which is infuriating. Why? F***ing hell, man. Just If you want to know what it's like compared to the Starship Troopers game, it's not as good, in my opinion. Um, some of the things, is, the drop pods are great. That is excellent. I would really like to see them. Uh, on the scale that they are in this in Starship Troopers. The way the guns work in this is much better. You can shoot limbs off the arachnids and it looks fantastic when they're coming at you and you're just shooting bits off straight out of Starship Troopers. That is better than it is in the game of Starship Troopers. But overall, I think Starship Troopers is definitely a better game than this. That's not to say that this is a bad game. It's certainly not. It surprised me uh, because I thought it was going to be shit after my first mission, which was just a travesty of crashes. It now seems to be fixed. And it's, yeah, it's a damn good game, and you can grab it on Green Man Gaming if you click the link in the description. Anyway, I'm going to thumb this up, and hopefully they'll keep adding content and get rid of this pay-to-win f***ing nonsense, even though they're not going to do that. And, um, yeah, it's a shame. Anyway, I said I wasn't going to say pay-to-win anymore, but it's pay-to-win. Extraction complete. Pelican 1 beginning ascent. Wait, wait, stop, stop, stop. There's something else I need to say. It has a f***ing rancid anti-cheat. Ugh. Now you can roll the end.